Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Thursday, July 25, 2024. A $2.2 billion contract has been signed to construct a modern, fit-for-purpose St. Catherine North Divisional Headquarters of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF. The terms of agreement were signed on Tuesday between the government and West Indies Home Contractors Limited, WICON. The three-story building, which is being constructed under the Ministry of National Security's Project Rebuild, Overhaul and Construct, ROC initiative, will span approximately 43,000 square feet. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the undertaking is a significant part of the continued transformation of the JCF, as well as enhancing community safety. But we expect to spend $19.7 billion in the next three years on new stations. Of course, that figure is huge because that, that 19.7 would include the massive station in West Milan, this one, uh, and specialized ops, the C5 center, which I'll speak about a little bit, all kinds of new exciting things that will, if you think that the police force has transformed, no, wait until you see it in the next three years. Mr. Holness points out that capital expenditure for the JCF since 2016 amounts to $14.4 billion. The National Security Minister and head of the JCF both agree that it is a significant investment that will accrue benefits for the Jamaican people. We have got to a good point where I think it is clear. The government's commitment is clear. We have made commitment in terms of increase the size of the force, equipping them in both in all areas and in building out an infrastructure that is suitable for the Jamaica Constabulary Force. This project and the major thrust in the renovating, overhauling and constructing of over 160 of our facilities in the last six years is a true demonstration of the state's commitment to support the transformation and renewal of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Having established a National Security Council to monitor the broad approach to security, the government is now moving to shortly present a National Security Act that looks at the issue from a comprehensive point of view. So we look at security from customs. We look at security from the anti-corruption um, perspective. We look at security from cyber. We look at security from telecommunications. We look at security from finance. All elements that could threaten the safety and security of the state. The Prime Minister asserts that no society can grow and prosper without established law and order, insisting that the JCF is the first and last bulwark in ensuring the rule of law and public order in Jamaica. Without the JCF, you're looking at chaos. So what we must all do as citizens of Jamaica is invest in the JCF. The men and women of the JCF were not imported. They were not recruited from abroad. They are from your communities. And every day they put their lives on the line for your safety and security. Mr. Holness was speaking at Tuesday's contract signing for the construction of the St. Catherine North Police Divisional Headquarters. He used the opportunity to offer deep and sincere condolences to the family and colleagues of Sergeant Kevin Main, who was fatally shot in the line of duty at the Halfway Tree Police Station on July 22. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Mining will be providing fisher folk with assistance to replace lost fishing gear, particularly fish traps, in the wake of Hurricane Beryl. Portfolio Minister Floyd Green made the announcement during a recent Parliament sitting where he highlighted the extensive damage inflicted by the hurricane. The ministry has reported financial loss to the agriculture sector at an estimated $4.73 billion, with approximately 11,200 fishers among those severely affected. Minister Green says the Ministry of Finance is being engaged to secure additional financial resources to meet the full needs of the sector. In addition to these response strategies, Consideration of temporary import measures to bridge any supply gaps and maintain food availability. Prioritize repair and reconstruction of essential infrastructure and fishing beaches. And we'll speak more towards that. We will have a program for our fishing beaches. And this is something that our Prime Minister has put as a fundamental priority. 
not only will we look to fix the beaches that we've mentioned, we will look to build them back better. Meanwhile, the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, is urging farming communities to establish protected seedling centers to enhance future recovery efforts. These centers are specific areas identified for the development of seedlings to supply farmers with essential plants to help in recovery after periods of loss. Senior Plant Health and Food Safety Officer with RADA, Francine Webb, made the appeal in a recent interview with JIS News. She says the seedling centers will allow farmers to bounce back from a loss in a short time. In addition to that, Mrs. Webb is encouraging farmers to stagger their planting days to reduce the risk of losing their entire crop to a single weather event. She explains that by staggering planting dates, farmers can extend their harvest and keep it coming in at a reasonable pace, which will help plants bounce back more quickly after a hurricane's impact. The Ministry of Labour and Social Security is partnering with Jamaica National JN Money Services to strengthen support services provided to seasonal workers in Canada. The Ministry's Jamaica Liaison Service, JLS, signed a Memorandum of Understanding with JN on Tuesday, outlining the terms of the agreement. Under the MOU, JN will have temporary occupation and use of the JLS offices in Leamington, British Columbia and Nova Scotia to offer its services to the seasonal workers. Labour and Social Security Minister Pernell Charles Jr. commends JN for being a consistent and strong partner. It is that collaboration and partnership that is going to inure to the benefit of our farm workers. Um, and we do look forward to um, furthering and strengthening our collaboration going forward. General Manager of JN Money Services, Horace Hines, shares that JN teams visit farms weekly to assist workers with remitting funds to Jamaica in addition to other assistance. Part of our mandate is not just to remit funds, it's how do we help to improve the lives and livelihoods of the farmers. And part of what we are interested in doing is ensuring that there is enough financial literacy among the group so that they are better able to manage their affairs. And finally, the Ministry of Education and Youth is set to implement a new teacher retention strategy for the upcoming academic year, which begins in September. This is to address the significant number of teacher resignations experienced last year. Acting Chief Education Officer Terry Ann Thomas Gale made the announcement during the Ministry's recent Region 6 2024 Back to School Conference held in Kingston. She revealed that the ministry was sourcing teachers from multiple countries to meet staffing requirements. We currently have engaged Nigeria, Ghana, the Philippines, India. So we are looking all over. We are giving you additional and additional pool from which you can select your teachers from. This initiative complements existing strategies, one of which is the flexibility for school administrators to employ part-time, retired and pre-trained graduate teachers, as well as final year student teachers, to mitigate staffing gaps. To identify and recruit teachers who are being engaged from foreign countries, administrators are being encouraged to utilize the ministry's job portal at jobs.moey.gov.jm. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.